Hi students, we're going to be focusing on Accounts and Financial Services, uh, part of the Office Administration Syllabus, it's Section 9, and what we are specifically going to be zooming in on is the Bank Reconciliation Statement. And I know that this is often a topic where you need a lot of practice, and it requires a little bit of um, thinking and a little more analysis on your part and some students often find it a bit difficult so I'm going to try my best to be as simple as possible and we're going to look at what the bank reconciliation statement is about the items included in the bank reconciliation statement the formula or formulae for preparing the bank reconciliation statement what are the steps involved in preparation of the bank reconciliation statement? How do we revise or update the cash book? And we're actually going to do some activities in this video series where we're going to learn how to prepare the bank reconciliation statement. So moving along, let's try and understand what the bank reconciliation statement is about. So we would know or we would recall that the cash book is used to record every cash payment and every cash receipt that the business makes or that the business receives. Periodically, it's, it's going to be necessary to compare the cash book record with the bank statement um, record to make sure that nothing has been either recorded incorrectly or omitted. So, looking at the bank reconciliation statement, it really is a way to marry or find the similarities and differences between both documents, in this case the cash book and the bank statement, and marry those balances or bring them together so that we could identify what has been omitted or what has been entered or recorded incorrectly to ensure that both balances are the same. At any point in time, when we look at the cash book, we should be able to extract or determine the opening cash balance at the start of the period. And to that cash balance, we look at the receipts, which would have been all the monies received over the period and add those and we look at all the payments made and subtract those. So when we examine the cash book and we examine the bank statement, we could check with the balance on the cash book or check the balance on the cash book against the balance on the bank statement. And what we have to remember is to allow for checks and any other amounts that are, be, are waiting to be cleared by the bank. For example, we know that sometimes when we deposit a check, there is often a hold on the check for a period of days. Any errors or missing items should be corrected. In one way to correct or highlight or find or discover these missing items, would be in performing a bank reconciliation in preparing sorry a bank reconciliation statement and this is an example of internal control this is one way that you as an individual or a business can pinpoint or highlight any discrepancies um, before contacting the bank if you need to so only if the discrepancies are not resolved by way of a completing the bank reconciliation statement should you contact your bankers. So for review purposes, let's just look at the cash book and the bank. So we're looking at the cash account and the bank account. And we are reminded here of the simple law of double entry, which accounts students would know that for every debit entry, there's a corresponding credit entry. So in this case, the debit entry in our bank column of our ledger shows withdrawals or payments and the corresponding credit when we're looking at the bank 
statement and the cash book in order to perform the bank reconciliation would be the corresponding credit in the cash book which represents a payment similarly credit entries on our bank account will be deposits therefore um, or receipts into our bank or deposits into our bank and debit entries on our cash book would be the receipts cash received or monies received would be entered on the debit side of our cash book so double entry double entry double entry is very important and we need to remember and bear these simple rules in mind when we are examining the cash book and the bank statement in order to determine what these entries mean when we are using them to prepare the bank reconciliation statement so when we look at procedures for reconciling the cash book and bank statement balance we look at the bank statement balance and the cash book balance and try to reconcile those we take into consideration interest paid and received we also can prepare the bank reconciliation statement by using the cash book balance or by using the bank statement balance so we can either start with the cash book balance or the bank statement balance so this brings us to the end of the introduction to the bank reconciliation statement remember that the two documents we are going to be examining would be the cash book and the bank statement we are examining these two documents to see if there are any discrepancies and those discrepancies are going to be used to reconcile the bank statement and cash book balance and this process is known as preparing the bank reconciliation statement so in part two we are going to look at the cash book the bank statement and the procedures for reconciling the cash book and bank statement balances.